Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Hammond Collection review. Today we're taking a look at the highly anticipated Therizinosaurus. This is the second figure in that $35 size class that the Carnotaurus came in. And the pre-order this figure from Target uh, at the time of this video it is June 2nd. This is the street release date, uh, release date for this figure and the Giganotosaurus. Uh, I don't know if anyone's really found him on shelves yet. I'm sure the probably next couple of days will probably be popping up on Target shelves. But I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to order one of these for yourself. So let's just go over the package really quick before we crack this beautiful figure open. We got the Hammond Collection logo up here. There is in a source of a nice picture of the Therry on the side of the box. You know, my one complaint with these Hammond Collection boxes, I just wish the window was a little bit bigger so you could see more of the figure. I just feel like you're just, you know, just getting a taste of the figure. And I'd rather see the whole figure just so I can check for any flaws on it. Because we all know Mattel in there. Uh, quality control on the side of the box we have the jurassic world dominion logo we got the theory on the side nice product shot of that and then on the back of the box we get some more promo shots of this amazing looking thing looks really really cool and then down here we have some other upcoming figures uh in the hammock collection i should have the Giganotosaurus tomorrow even though i ordered both at the same time they both shipped at the same time but one came from ups and the other one shipping with fedex and it says i should have the the Giga in by tomorrow we have the pyro raptor which is strangely is not up for pre-order yet uh velociraptor delta and claire those are both up on pre-order at target right now so enough about the packaging let's crack this figure open and take a closer look and here is the Therizinosaurus out of the package, and this is an absolutely fantastic looking figure. I really like the mainline Dominion release of this uh, toy, uh, but the Hammond Collection one absolutely blows that one out of the water. Just the articulation is fantastic. I just love how tall it is. Therizinosaurus was a very tall dinosaur uh, in real life. It's just such a bizarre looking murder turkey, tickle chicken, uh, you know, whatever nickname you want to give it. Uh, the paint apps are very, very faithful to how it appeared in Dominion. You have that, you know, dark uh, grayish blue uh, coat with the uh, rusty red coloration along the uh, the back thighs and tail. You have those menacing looking claws on the hands. Each one of those is articulated, which just looks absolutely great. Uh, just all around, just an awesome looking figure. I just love the poses it can pull off. It just looks very, you know, intimidating. Uh, just standing like so tall and upright like that. And it was one, you know, the few memorable scenes from Dominion. Like I just absolutely love the the Therry scene with it stalking Claire and just yeeting that deer uh, across the screen. Uh, yeah, this thing is cool. And you know, for thirty five bucks, it's so worth the price. The Hammond Collection figures are an absolute bargain for what you get. And time for some measurements. We measure this figure along the curve of the neck. Uh, this comes out to about 19 and a half uh, inches long or 49 and a half centimeters. And it's about nine and a half inches tall to the top of the head. Obviously, the height will change depending on how you have the figure posed. Uh, that, that nine and a half measurement was just over 24 centimeters. So Therizinosaurus in real life was around 30 feet long or around nine meters. So I'll put this figure nicely in that 118 scale range. All right, now let's zoom in, take a look at this nice, accurate movie head sculpt. Uh, it does have the glass eyes, and I have to say, you know, in natural light, it shows up much better than most of the other glass eye figures. It's been a big complaint of mine. Uh, it's just the way my studio lights are situated. It's really making them look dead inside. But that's okay because in the movie, the there was a source was blind. It was actually blind in one eye and it had uh, in the right eye and it had cataracts on the other. It would have been kind of cool if they actually did replicate it on this, but they did not. So anyways, let's just take a look at that awesome looking head. You have some nice bright blues uh, on the uh, section above the eyes and along the back part of the jaw. Some nice bright yellows. Paint in there, you can see the beak sculpted in. And let me just try to turn the head a little bit. I'm gonna try to adjust my studio lights just so you can see that glass eye. You got that nice cat slit pupil in there, very, very uh, nicely done. And then opening the mouth up, we have some nice details inside the mouth. The problem is this figure is taller than most figures I review on my channel by lights, and it's really just not you know illuminating well. But you got the these nicely inserted plastic teeth. These teeth are not uh, painted in, and this is like a new step uh, that Mattel can do with some of the Hammond Collection figures and even some of the mainline figures, and it's such an improvement. The teeth don't look oversized anymore. There's no sloppy white paint. So yes, big fan of these plastic insert teeth, and you have all this nice glossy pink plastic for the gums and the tongue, and here is a view of the head from the top. You can see all those uh, 
uh, feathers nicely, nicely sculpted, and it slowly transitions into this rusty red coloration at the neck, and it goes all the way down the body, even along the thighs, and all the way along the tail, contrasting nicely with that almost like bluish coloration for the rest of the feathers. And then for the neck, we have some light gray uh, for the neck, and even the underside of the uh, head is painted in that gray coloration. Same thing for the underside of the body there. I just absolutely love the paint apps on this thing. And I'm at the pause my camera to move the camera down. And there we go. So now going down to the arms, you have these beautiful claws sculpted in this a nice dry brushing along the claws and it gives them a really nice lifelike look. And you can see these little articulation joints on the claws and we'll get to those a little bit later. Some more dry brushing on the scales on the hands and let's just turn the palms out so you can see the details on the inside of the palms. You do have some nice feathers along the arm all nicely sculpted and then going down to the thighs with some pretty thick and powerful looking thighs and scaled lower legs nice proportionate feet absolutely loving the more proportionate feet on these hammock collection figures it looks so much bigger than the early uh, so much better than the earlier figures those toe claws are painted in a nice light gray coloration and then going down to the tail we got more of that rusty red mixing with that blue and more of that light gray coloration for the underside of the tail so yeah all around this thing just looks absolutely incredible just love the paint apps on it and the articulation is great which we're going to get to in a second for articulation the mouth can open up that wide close completely flush you do have rotation on this joint right here as well as upwards and downwards movement for the neck, you do get rotation on that joint as well as downwards and upwards movement. I wish I got a little bit more downwards movement, but it does not look too bad getting the neck fully extended out. For the arms, the shoulders are on a very tight, clicky hinge joint. You can get some nice outward movement on those joints. Very, very tight, especially on the right arm of this one. You get backwards and forwards movement. For the elbow, you get just a little bit over 90 degrees of bend you also get rotation on that joint for the wrist you get 360 degrees they are the hinge joint you get some really good inward movement not so much outward movement and then getting down to the claws each claw has a hinge joint and it can rotate in its place so it gives you lots of posability with those claws absolutely love the articulation it's a nice work around instead of adding joints to the fingers just the way they sculpted that would not work well so it's a very cool piece of engineering just love how those claws work and for the legs legs can move forwards and backwards there is a very clicky ratchet you can hear it so you gotta lock it into place just to get some movement but i really really like that stability this will help it uh you know achieve some good poses without it falling over and you do have a little bit of that hip pivot uh that we've seen on a lot of the mainline figures uh for the knees you can click these can bend just over 90 degrees for the ankle joint you do get some upwards and it was movement as well as rotation and same thing on the feet you got some hinge joint in there and some rotation they're very very tight you can see how it can rotate and pivot side to side and going down to the tail the tail can move up down side to side it is a rubberized tail with a wire in there so you can get some nice movements Ah, uh, that tail, absolutely love it. It feels like there's like a little bit of like a foam filling in there to keep this nice and full looking. Really, really appreciate that. It feels very similar uh, to the tail on the Hammer Collection T-Rex. Moving on with comparisons, here it is with Dominion Clear. You can just see how massive an animal Therizinosaurus is. Just such a weird, weird looking dinosaur. And just like the, the length of its claws are almost as big as the Clear Action figure, which is pretty cool. And next up, here it is with the Dominion mainline therizinosaurus and you can see the hammock collection one is much bigger uh both these figures cost roughly about the same obviously this one has an action feature and electronics but this one actually had a decent amount of articulation for a mainline figure you had articulation at the wrist the uh the elbow the arms and the knees um and i always felt like this was like almost kind of like a prototype for a hammock collection theory and next up here it is with the hammock collection Carnotaurus and both these figures are in the same uh, thirty-five dollar, uh, you know, price point, and you get to see how much bigger the Therry is. I'm just actually kind of blown away uh, by the size of this figure for the price of it, and that thirty-five dollar uh, size scale really opened the door for a lot more figures 
And I'm really happy that Mattel finally did it. I've been saying that ever since the beginning of the Hammond Collection that we needed a in-between size scale between the $20 figures and the you know the $50 uh, Rex figure. And it's working out beautifully so far. Can't wait for uh, Stegosaur. That, that one is high, high up on my list. And next up, here it is with the Indominus Rex. And I'm, you know, I'm figuring sooner or later we'll have a uh, Hammond Collection Indominus. And I'm sure we'll eventually get the highly, highly requested Spinosaurus at some time in the future. And let's just take out an accurate looking Therizinosaurus. This is PNSO's uh, take on the species. You can see the animal in real life have a, had a much more upright posture versus uh, this, you know, this vertical posture of the uh, Dominion one, but still it's really, really cool. Just absolutely love the design of this one. You know, these Jurassic designs are a little, you know, exaggerated, a little bit embellished, but I really think that they returned out really, really cool looking. And next up, let's do one of the $20 price point figures here it is with the carithosaurus and here it is with the hammock collection velociraptor blue and lastly here it is with the hammock collection t-rex and what a long way we've come look at these nice proportionate feet versus the giant clown shoe feet on the t-rex uh, you know, the few Hammond Collection figures that come with proportionate feet, uh, the balance is fantastic on them. I just wish they did this first, but, you know, if they did that first, how, how can Mattel, you know, not get us to get a version 2.0 with improved feet and better teeth, which will probably be coming down the line at uh, some point. But, yeah, really, really digging these new improvements to the Hammond Collection. It's just, you know, it's a true collector's line, and they're doing a really fantastic job with it. So, final thoughts on the Hammond Collection Therizinosaurus. It's a fantastic figure. It's an absolute bargain for 35 bucks. It sports a movie accurate sculpt. The paint apps are really, really good. The articulation is fantastic. All the articulation on each of the individual claws is a fantastic touch. It has great balance with those nice proportionate feet. It stands upright, pretty solid. Those ratchet joints and the hips really help uh, with stability. You don't have to worry about the hips being loose and the figure falling over. Just all around an absolute fantastic piece. And I can't not wait for my uh, Giganotosaurus to come in the mail tomorrow from, from the few pictures I've seen of in-hand images. That one looks absolutely fantastic. So yeah, highly, highly recommend this figure. And that being said, we all know how it goes when the next wave of Hammond Collection figures comes out. The previous figure from that wave, uh, the supply dries up very quickly and the price is skyrocketed. So if you haven't picked up the Carnotaurus yet, I highly re recommend you pick that up now because the Therry is in the same price point on it and it's going to replace it on shelves. So definitely snag that masterpiece of a figure really soon or you're going to regret it later on the uh, secondary market. So that will do it for the review. Just waiting for the Jigger to come in tomorrow and that review will be up either on Monday or Tuesday. And I still got some uh, Holland Good figures coming in. My Gastonia, they said they couldn't deliver to me. And now it's getting sent back to the uh, place I ordered from. Never, ever had that happen before. So trying to get that all sorted out. I should have the uh, Myasaur uh, figures in sometime this week. So stay tuned for those reviews. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. And it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.